On a Wednesday morning, you call it Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. I call it your midweek thriller. Welcome on the show. My name is Wally Scott. Now, the Edo, State, Edo Sports Festival, the ceremony was held a little bit behind schedule due to a downpour which prevented Oshibajo was built to declare the event open from attending. Edo State's Governor Godwin Obaseki, who declared the festival open, in the absence of Oshibajo, disclosed that the Vice President was unable to make the trip to the venue due to bad weather. The colorful ceremony at the Samuel Ogwemudia Stadium officially kick-started the games after the downpour. Musician Timmy Dakolo, homeboy in Nasty, and Edo State's cultural groups lit up the ceremony and thrilled the fans and dignitaries present with their dozen performances. The athletes parade added more glamour in the ceremony. Mascots walked around the pitch to cheers from the crowd. About 5,000 spectators were at the venue to experience the richness and blend of culture among 36 states and the federal capital territory. Chairman, local organizing committee, Philip Schweibel, who also doubles as the deputy governor of Edo State, gave the welcome address and thanked the crowd who came for the historic event. After that, Governor Obaseki, beaming with smiles, took to the podium to express his joy at having the festival finally taking place after several postponements. Um, I have um, a colleague, Mudashiru Shitsu, who is in Faraway Edo State, of course, I'm covering the sports festival. Good morning, Mudashiru Shitsu. Uh, good morning, Wallace Scott. Great to have you all here from Edo. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, too. Now, how was the um, um, opening ceremony yesterday? How would you rate it? How would you assess it from your opinion? Yes, um, the opening ceremony was um, a wonderful moment. Um, but first of all, let's, there was an early downpour that um, delayed um, the opening ceremony. The vice president of the country was expected, but unfortunately, due to the weather, he couldn't make it um, to... Um, Samogba Media Stadium, the venue of the opening ceremony of the National Sports Festival. Regardless, that doesn't take away the excitement on the face of the people. And I want to give um, a big kudos to the government of um, Edo State for giving us uh, a show that looks like or rather, that is an international standard in terms of um, the stages and um, the passes and everything that has to do with the match pass. Now, there's a question. Before, okay. Go on, go on, go on. I want you to know that um, activities have been going on, stock activities before the opening ceremony yesterday. And you also know that... Um, we know that Delta, Edo, and Baeza are leading in no part, uh, with Delta leading the medal table of the swimming pool. We also know that um, in um, squash started some days back. In badminton, Lagos State won the, won, has won the men's um, team event, while Edo won um, the women's team event. And um, on some two days, we'll be having um, table tennis in that um, same venue. But also, we let you to know that um, the compliance with COVID-19 protocol is of an international standard. You have to put on your face masks. You have to show uh, evidence at the gate that... Um, you are with your face mask before entry. Even the sitting position at the Samuel Bermuda Stadium has been labeled a space for each other. That means the closer person at my side is arm's length. But now that um, the opening ceremony happened yesterday, today we see some activities, sport activities starting like church. We also let you to know many, many of these things going on. That everybody is really happy, and I'm sure you are aware that nine athlete, ten athletes have been have tested um, positive for COVID-19, but they are in isolation. But regardless to all this, everything is going on normal, and I really hope that um, 
it should continue like that. Let's now let's see. ask Emuda. <clears throat> we hear that okay. during the opening ceremony yesterday, we heard that there were over 5,000 spectators in the stand. Was COVID-19 protocol followed at that venue that yesterday? Yeah, if, I don't know who is reporting that um, there are over 5,000 stands. But I'm sure video of the match parts and um, the sitting position will change your mind. Let's not forget that um, the athletes are supposed to come to this sport festival should be tried the number. But the committee, LOT and MOT, has reduced um, the numbers of athletes. We have at, um, a state like Nassau are bringing just 200 and something athletes. Even Delta, that is always known for the largest contingent and not having the usual numbers of contingent to this event. So there's nothing like a, a breach of COVID-19 protocol. Nevertheless, from those watching from TV and other platforms, it may look clumsy, but I tell you that um, everybody is careful with, um, with the way they associate themselves at the Sama of Bermuda Stadium. Now, um, Muda, don't forget that yeah. they are all housed in a particular school. That's Uniben. Now, how have they ensured that the, 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 the athletes don't go out at night and they ensure security in the hostels and ensure these kids don't go out in the night and all that? How do they ensure that? The movement of athletes and um, how they go about that they have in the states um, that brings them. And the states will not do what the LOC will not ask them to do. So every state at the uni um, in um, University of Virginia has a residential um, a place for states are all going to follow the protocol of the LOC. And, uh, but right now, there have not been any negative story as regards to the breach of um, protocols that guide the camp. But let's not forget, it's just a few days. We still have um, several more days to go. Okay, now, Muda, um, by your little assessment so far with the games that have been um, embarked upon already, do you think Lagos State have a chance to topple Delta? Again, Delta are defending champions. I don't think um, Lagos State will do anything so much. They've tried their possible best, but in the churning Delta State will be very, very difficult. The only person that who might be slugging it out with Delta is the host state, Edo state. And let's not forget that um, Rivers came towards, if I'm not mistaken, the last one. But right now, you'll be surprised that you might not see them in the first five because most of the athletes have um, shown allegiance with other states. So right now, it might just, it just has to do with um, Edo and Delta State. I was just to mention this, Linda. Lagos State has always complained about poaching in the past. They say that they train these athletes, they make them get better in whatever sports they do, and then Delta and Edo come from behind and remind them they are from Delta and Edo and then poach them, and sports festival day, bam! They are running for Delta or Edo and not Lagos State who've been training there for all these years. That um, philosophy doesn't hold any gains or water. It is um, something that um, I would advise the Lagos State Sports Commission should start saying. Because they also, in the past, they also have, they also have poached some states, some athletes from that state. So it's uh, not all athletes that um, Lagos State um, train. I have the example of those that, they, um, that um, after a code, a code 2012, they brought them to Lagos State and become 
Lagos State um, athlete. So Lagos State um, should not um, be saying that. If that, that is the case, Muda, there. what can be done to stop poaching before the sports festivals? What can be done to stop it? Yeah. The only thing that can be done to poaching is the state should sign a contract with these athletes. Most of all these athletes don't have a contract, a binding contract. If I'm going to sign two years with Lagos State within the space of another sport festival or three years, I should make sure that my work here is utmost undermined. A state should not um, enslave athletes. Okay, Muda, stay with us. Don't go anywhere yet. Please stay. <clears throat> Don't go anywhere yet. Now, Kaduna State has unveiled plans to host the 2022 National Sports Festival. In a brochure released by the Kaduna State Sports Ministry, Governor Nasser El Rufai said they intended to raise the bar, having hosted the 16th edition of the festival. Kaduna State is bidding to host the festival for the third time. It first hosted the third edition in 1977 and had another successful hosting in 2009. Some of the proposed venues are Kaduna Club, Muritala Square, Hamadi Bello Stadium, Kaduna Township Stadium, Kaduna State University, Nigeria Defense Academy, Police College, and the Kaduna Polytechnic. Now, Muda, Kaduna State intend to host the sports festival for the third time, and they insist they want to raise the bar. Something better than Lagos State, better than Edo now, they want to raise the bar. Can that be done? Yes, um, Kaduna State has um, proven that um, in the north, if I can say that, that uh, one of the um, sports states. You know, we have um, schools like the Amontbele University that also do a lot of sport. But beyond that, I think the state has an intention and has made an intention early enough. Let's not forget that other states, according to the Secretary of um, the Sport Ministry, have come to also show their intention. Okay, Muda. But it's all... Muda, I want to thank you very much. I have little or no okay. time, but um, we will be calling you regularly throughout this week to be confirming how it's going in Edo State. We hope you will pick our call when we do. I'm at standby. Thank you very much, Muda Shirushitu. All the way from Edo State, where the sports festival is taking place. Now, Barcelona's women's team, Tuesday, have announced that their Nigerian star, Asisa Toshuala, has undergone surgery on her right foot. The official statement by the Spanish club further disclosed that the Super Falcons skipper has been experiencing some discomfort in the right foot. She'll be out for three weeks. Now, I've got him. Um, I will have um, Kweku Elenita about Johnson. He's a big, big Liverpool fan. And he's one of the very few people who believe that, um, like Klopp, the team can come back from a 3-1 deficit and beat Real Madrid at an empty Anfield Stadium. His name is Kweku and then talk about Johnson. I hope I have him yet. Do I have him yet? Not yet. Okay, let's go to the story um, about um, Liverpool. Klopp believing that, of course, they can actually um, overturn that. But uh, before I do that, Man City's Phil Foden grabbed the last-minute winner as they beat Borussia Dortmund 2-1 in their Champions League quarterfinal first leg on Tuesday. After Marco Rios had nestled a late equalizer for the German visitors, City took a 19-minute le level lead with a classic counter-attacking move, finished off by Kevin De Bruyne. After Dortmund's former Liverpool midfielder Emery Chan had given the ball away on the halfway line, Pep Guardiola's City side then had a penalty awarded but correctly overturned by VAR after a challenge by Chan on Rodri and Dortmund, buoyed by the reprieve, found some attacking verve. Romanian referee Ovidio Hartigan was at the centre of things again when City keeper Edison hesitated and Dortmund's Jude Bellingham nipped in and shifted the ball into the net. But the 17-year-old was harshly ruled to have fouled the Brazilian. As I asked to the players, just win the game. I don't want anything else. We, they did it, we did it, and now we are going to Dortmund to absolutely not defend. We're going to jazz our high pressing, we're going to jazz our build up, we're going to jazz our um, control the, his runners, and uh, yeah, we are going to try to play 90 minutes to try to reach semi-final. Listen, better don't talk about the referees in the Champions League in this season and the previous season, please. No, no, I'm going to talk. I didn't speak in that time, I'm not going to speak now. So, we have a... 
in a huge list about this kind of situation in this competition. Uh, so that's why it's better, it's better no comment, the referee decides his decision and, and that's all. The linesman bizarrely got Erling Haaland's autograph in the tunnel afterwards, is that a bit strange? They told me, I didn't see it, maybe it's a fan. So he's a fan from Haaland and he's here, why not? So uh, a part of that, I'm not, so the referees were brilliant, so. Uh, the, the, the game was not a problem, so it was a penalty. Not to, so the 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 VAR, the people told me it was not penalty. And after the the Bellingham the action from the leg is uh, higher than expected. So uh, yeah, the referee's analysis was was correct, was perfect. No, 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 it was not an influence like it was in the past. It maybe happened today. It was it was correct. And after you wanna. Maybe it was for his son or for his daughter, I don't know. Have you ever been asked for your autograph in the tunnel? I never see before, but it's happened, so but listen, they did they did a good job, isn't it? So that's all. So nothing happened. So we don't have my guest on the show yet, but of course we might be wrapping this up soon on the show today. <clears throat> but of course, Real Madrid coach Zinedine Zidane has praised the performance of Vinicius Jr. after the forward scored twice as the side punished a sloppy Liverpool to win 3-1 at home in the first leg of the Champions League quarterfinals. Liverpool will take solace from the fact they managed to overturn a 3-0 deficit against Barcelona in the semi-finals in 2019, but they will be unable to counter the scoring, <coughs> scorching Anfield atmosphere in the second leg. Now, Klopp lamented the lack of concentration and was disappointed with the side giving the ball away too casually, which led to him handling, handing off Nebi Keita before half time for Thiago Alcantara. Our team is built for this kind of games. We are uh, we, we face a football playing side, and, which is very helpful for football in general, but for our kind of defending as well. Um, so, and that's why uh, we have a chance. Absolutely, I heard outside already. Everybody says Real Madrid is favorite. Great, no problem at all with that. They are used to the role, and we have no problem with uh, the role of the challenger. Um, but how is that? We want to give it a proper try. We know that we were good that night, but 25 minutes being really good in the final never was never enough. Um, and nobody's interested when they look back in 10, 15 years how we played the first 25 minutes, but we knew it anyway. And, uh, but it was a different time. We were in a different place since then. A lot of things happened. So, um, no, we feel good in our situation, but we know that we face a difficult. Jürgen Klopp. Now I've got Kweku Eleni Toba Johnson on the show with me this morning. Good morning, Kweku. Hi, Wally. How are you doing? Good morning. That was, thank you for joining us. Yeah, I'm nice to be here. That was Klopp talking about um, the boys being too sloppy and giving the ball away too casually in yesterday's match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened in the midfield. Vinaldom and um, Keita kept giving up, giving away the ball. And um, actually, it's uh, it's obvious that uh, the the energy in the team has um, uh, reduced considerably, especially at, in the midfield. But uh, there's stuff that can be, that can be done at the return match uh, at Anfield. Uh, I'm expecting that um, he's going to show up the defense by uh, uh, keeping a uh, strength on the bench and playing Milner at right back. And then I expect that uh, they will put some energy in the midfield by playing Thiago and... Uh, of course, the, the number six, Fabinho, and wait for this. Firmino should play in the number ten position, and I, and um, Jota at nine, Mane yeah. and uh, Salah. I want Although to move Mane on. has actually lost form, and yesterday he also gave the ball away quite a few times. I and, hope I heard you uh, well. He, you want Firmino to play against Real Madrid? Was, Say that again, I didn't hear that. I, I want to hear you well. You want Firmino to play against that Real Madrid? Firmino. Firmino. Wow. But, uh, Roberto Firmino, Bobby. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, but, well, but, but know, my, I, I think he should start against Madrid at Anfield. Yeah, my question would because, 
How could Jurgen Klopp have fielded a Naby Keita ahead of Thiago Alcantara in that game? Because he wanted to put some energy in the midfield. You understand? He, yeah. uh, and he needed a, a, a dribbler, a skillful player. But uh, Keita did not deliver, so he had to take him out. Now, Kweku, would we say that um, the problem with Liverpool to a large extent is because of the, 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 back, the, back, the guys in defence who are actually out? Oh, most definitely. Uh, Cruz and uh, Modric, they, they, don't, they, they can't move any longer, you know, but they are master passers of the ball. So what do they do? They have a speed star like Vinicius, and they're throwing the ball to him, and he just runs. Nobody can stop him. Nat Phillips cannot stop him. Neither can Kabak. So Kabak did a decent job in keeping, uh, uh, what's his name, Benzema quiet most of the game. You understand? But I can tell you for free that if we had a fit VVD and uh, Gomez or Martin, they would not have had that. Uh, they, they had it so easy. I mean, running behind our defense so easily. They would have. Because both, both defenders have pace and they have strength and they are good with their feet on the ball. All in all, Kweku. So definitely. Okay, go on. Definitely, we're missing those guys. All in all, Kweku, what would you say Liverpool yeah. did wrong? And what should they do right at Anfield? Yeah, that's what I've been trying to say. Uh, I already told you that they have to show up the defense. But he, he can, I mean, Trent cannot play that much because uh, he can't handle Vinicius. The guy is too fast for him. And uh, we, need, we, need, we need the defense as uh, strong um, in, at Anfield against Madrid because they already know what they... they they bypass the midfield and they just chuck the ball into to to finish us to run, you know. So that has to be then the press has to be uh, intense. So uh, that's actually why uh, we also uh, couldn't do much yesterday because the the press was not hard was not intense enough. So we have to press them upfield, and uh, I think Jota should play as a striker. And uh, Firmino, who's actually one of our best presses, should play as a champ. Now, I heard Klopp say that, um, let me quote him verbatim. He said, we did it against say Barcelona. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear that. that. I didn't hear that. Um, I, I Klopp said, I want to quote him verbatim. He said, we did it against Barcelona and we can do it against Real Madrid. But the team... I, I mean, that's, that's, that's um, a way go. It's, it's giving me some confidence. I'm, I'm sure that. Uh, yeah, but technically, technically, that team against Barcelona is not this team now. Technically. Technically, I agree with you. But there, I mean, it's a system. It's a system. If they can, if the personnel can handle the system, we'll twerk them. So let me put you on the hot seat now. Predict what the scoreline will be. Say that again. Predict what the scoreline will be. I didn't hear that while Can you predict the scoreline? In yeah, my, 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 my perfect scoreline would be 2-0. Two two but uh, I expect that uh, the game can go into extra time. Okay. Play 3-1 play three, and go into extra time. Yeah. Okay. But Liverpool 2, Real Madrid 0. Mm. Thank you very much yeah. for calling. Quick, cool, and it's about Johnson. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're Thank very you. welcome, bro. Thank you. That's a big, big uh, Liverpool fan. Quick, cool, and it's about Johnson calling from Lagos. And of course... Um, Die-hard Liverpool fan all, all his life, okay? Now, Paris Saint-Germain will not have revenge on their minds when they play Bayern Munich in their Champions League quarterfinal after losing to the German team in last season decider, manager Mauricio Pochettino. Now, as I said, now Bayern beat Paris Saint-Germain 1-0 in the final last year to seal a treble. But Pochettino, who replaced manager Thomas Tuchel midway through the season, said this time will be different as they were playing a two-legged tie. Both sides will be missing key players with Paris Saint-Germain striker Mauro Icardi out of the thigh injury, while midfielder Marco Verratti and his in Italian teammate Alejandro Florenzi both tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, the strength of uh, Bayern Munich, I think, is a squad, is, a, is a effective. And I think uh, when you won, like uh, Bayern Munich won the, the Champions League and the... Uh, mundial of the club, I think it's because you have a, a squad that is uh, is very very strong, very very uh, very good. Uh, not only eleven players than play, and that is why they they uh, achieve what they achieve. 
Pakistan Germain say they are not on a revenge mission, and I say, I don't believe that. Do you? <laughs> Koji Murafushi, an Olympic gold medalist who until September 2020 was sports director for the Tokyo 2020 Games, is undergoing treatment for brain lymphoma, a rare type of cancer, according to a media report. Now, Murafushi, who is 46 and a former hammer thrower, was diagnosed with an illness after developing symptoms last year and has already undergone surgery and steroid treatments. Now, he is set to undergo a transplant of his own stem cells later this month. Murafushi, who won a gold medal in the hammer throw of the 2004 Athens Olympics and a bronze medal at London 2012, was sports director for the Tokyo 2020 Games, postponed the year due to the coronavirus pandemic until being named commissioner of the Japan Sports Agency in September. And that's all we can take on the show today, plus sports and plus TV Africa on a Wednesday morning. I call it your midweek thriller. Thank you, Mudashiro Shitsu from Edo um, at the sports festival. Of course, he came to the show today. And of course, thank you, Kweku Renitaba Johnson, for joining us on the show today. Big Liverpool fan. Join us same time tomorrow, same time, for another edition. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.